Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Mostly Sci-Fi. I think this is our, what, fourth episode, I do believe. And so this is Mostly Sci-Fi speaking to you right now. And um, hopefully you are subscribed to this channel. It is very important um, that you subscribe. I've been working on this channel for about a year and a half now. Originally, I had mostly sci-fi, and then I got kind of demonetized. And so I decided to move here. And so, um, you know, since then, I've completed Original Sin, Aliens, and Aliens Genocide. And so at the moment, I am doing like Bud Hopkins Intruders, but I'm also doing some other things. So uh, I would like some support. Because right now, um, geez. So the last two videos, I did like three videos in succession this week. And then they're, they're not getting a lot of views, probably because of the algorithm or whatever. But I'm just going to keep on just doing it because this is something I enjoy. Like, um, for example, like Battle of the Anime Opening. So I choose, I chose... Like, uh, I think five of the animates that I thought had the best openings of all time. And then I pitted them against each other. I thought I would get more views because a lot of people like anime, but, you know, the algorithm, man. And so this was a, a really, I thought it was a really good video. I spent like eight hours, um, more than that, like 10 hours on this. Because you got to narrate it, you got to find the pieces to put together, you got to find the right music for it, and stuff like this. It's it's kind of disappointing when, like, you that's what I find in YouTube. Like, when you work hard on something, in, in my tenure of doing YouTube, because I've done other channels, okay, and I've just recently left a channel this. I kind of deserted the channel because I'm like, it's it's too negative. It was a lot of negativity going on. I didn't want to deal with it. And I just wanted to move on and just start something new, start afresh, and do something that I've always wanted to do. You know, I've always held back because of fear, right? Like fear I won't be liked or fear this kind of thing. But what I found out is that a lot of the videos that you thought that, that you worked hard on, they don't get any views. And that's the most frustrating part about, like, doing YouTube. Like, you can work, like, really hard on something, and then nobody will watch it. And I think in my tenure, that has happened more times than I can remember. Like, I work hard on something, like, really well. Like, most of the time, say, like, 80% of the time, when I work hard on something, it's, it won't get any views. <laughs> you know, it'll, it'll, it'll still be like this. So, you know, and then the ones that I don't spend a lot of time on, they ended up getting, like, like lots of views or what have you. And so I got these baby po projects that I'm, I'm pushing out, and I'm hoping that you, as subscribers, like, if there are any subscribers that you support part of it, and that's not even monetary, that's just watching it and just commenting because that's engagement. And if you want to do as a like or dislike, is whatever. Like, like and dislike, I don't think matters so much. But, um, like, commenting ma matters a lot, right? So, like, if you can comment, you know, watch it and comment, I would be very appreciative. I spent a lot of time on this. Like, you know, and I think that if you gave it a chance that you would like it, actually. You just got to give it a chance. You know what I mean? Um, when I make something, when I spend a lot of time on it, I'm very sure that the audience will like it. But the problem is it doesn't get the the promotion that it should be getting, right? And so that this is the reason why people not watch because it, it don't have the promotion. There's no promotion going for it because my channel is too small. So this this is what I worked on. 
This took me about like two days. And um, the Bud Hopkins. Okay, I don't got a lot of views on that. I hope I can get a lot of views on that. This is very good. Contrary to what you might think. I think you should give some of these things a chance. So Bud Hopkins. Uh, the Intruders. I already did videos on that and all that stuff. Like, just give it a chance. L listen to it. Like, this actually took me like five days to do. Because I have to do... Each chapter is like like 60 pages, right? And so between work and this, every time I come right from work and then I start reading because I want this channel to prosper. So after I come from work, I just go right to here and just start reading and start doing the things that I'm, I'm supposed to be doing, okay? So this is like an hour. You can see like 10 minutes or 15 minutes is a lot. It takes like, to do 15 minutes, it takes... What? 15 minutes takes like 45 minutes to do. Okay, at least. So, if you got an hour so in 14 minutes, you can imagine how long that would take me to do that. And that's only chapter two. I had also did chapter one, which, you know, got a little bit of views and stuff like that. So, I would implore you to just to, to, to try something out. You know, this is sci-fi. This is real sci-fi stuff that I'm doing. You know, so this is a genuine sci-fi channel, right? Um, and then last but not least, which I completed this yesterday, this took me eight hours. Only three minutes and 47 seconds, it took me eight hours to do this. And I'm going to continue doing it, whether people look at it or not. Like, that's how you know you love what you do, like, you love doing these things because whether people like it or not, you still do it. I've had, I have lots of projects like that. I got a, a project called the, you know, the Golden Ninja, right? Um, which I wrote a long time ago, about uh, two years ago. And I spent like count, hundreds of hours on this thing. It got like a hundred chapters, right? And I didn't care if people didn't like it or not. I just had to complete it, you know. And so I, I almost completed it. It's like on the second season or what have you. But I stopped doing it because the passion stopped. Um, but when you have that passion, when you're doing something that you like doing, like the hours just fly by, you know. And so I feel this way when I did Alien Revival. And this is like a graphic video novel that you must go look at. I'm I'm telling if you don't go look at this, you're doing yourself a disservice. I'm telling you right now, you're doing yourself a disservice. Because it, the quality is top quality. There's no excuse not to see it. You know, unless you, you kind of being stubborn or something like that. No excuse not to see this. So this is this is prologue. And right now I'm working on chapter uh i'm working on part one so part one is going to be longer than this i think this is like 15 it might be 15 minutes to 20 minutes but i just wanted to give you a taste of what this will be the next one is going to be better okay because i had to learn how to do things with this one but i implore you go check it out i think you would like it okay I'm doing audiobooks, but this is going beyond audiobooks now. Like, it's now we're on another level. <laughs> okay? Because one of my subscribers asked me, Well, can you do a comic book? Can you do a comic book and do your, the same audio kind of quality with that? And I'm like, Probably. Yeah, I could. Let me have a try. Right? And so I took, there's a, you know, a, a novel, well, a graphic novel called Alien Revival. It's by. Marvel Comics. They got several issues out, and I'm just gonna pick them off. This, you know, depending on if if I get the type of exposure that I think I'm gonna get, because the quality is good, the quality is there. You know, the problem is I'm not getting any exposure. So like and subscribe if you can. I know I I'm giving you 15 minutes. Uh, what 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 10 minutes of of all this exposure, right? I'm trying to get the plug right now. And that's because look at my subscriber count, 
2.48. Like, I'm way down in the gutter. Like, <laughs> you know, I'm the crap under people's uh, um, uh, feet, you know. So it takes a lot of motivation for me to continue. So please just, you know, watch it and subscribe and just make a comment, you know, write a comment or whatever. Don't write something crazy negative because some people write negative like, you sound like you're screeching glass. Your, your, your voice sounds like it's screeching glass. And then you got people that say, yo, I love this. Like, I don't understand, like, why people go, why is so easy for people to be negative than positive? When something is negative, like, people are so fast to get up on it. When something is positive, people are hesitant to do something or to say something, right? But negative is so easy. It's so easy to do something. You ever go on one of those, those dating apps, right? You say something positive to a girl, she will just, like, give you a one-word answer or won't even answer. But if you say... <laughs> you're so fat she will answer within five minutes and that's how humanity is it's like it's we're so like conditioned to respond to negativity so much and you know we need to stop it we need to change you know and i'm trying to make a difference trying to change in in, in that way so uh check this out put a comment you know and support the channel yeah so all those people who are supporting, I am very, very grateful. Okay? So let's delve into the topic. So the topic today, um, which is it's going to be almost like a lecture because uh, of Prometheus. Um, Prometheus has been, it's like the nappy-headed stepchild of the alien universe. Like it just gets crapped on by everybody. It's like, there's so many things unanswered. We hate this movie. You know, you check the, the IBDM is like a seven. In my opinion, I think Prometheus should be like a, I would say like a eight, a 8.5. I think it's one of the greatest sci-fi thrillers that I've ever seen. And you might think I'm crazy for that, but why do I say that? Because it's one of those movies where I could just watch it over and over and over again and not get tired of it. Like, you got movies that do that, like Gladiator. You could watch it, like, once, and then, like, six months or eight months later, you could watch it again, and you can kind of enjoy it. There are movies where you just watch once and it's done. It's like a one and done. You know those movies that are one and done's. You know what I mean? Like one and done movies where you just can't. It's, it's okay. It's good. But I don't want to watch it again. Right? Prometheus. I think I have I have watched Prometheus like 15 to 16, 15 times. Over 15 times. Since 2012. And so that's like once or twice a year. I would say that I will watch Prometheus again, and every time I watch it, it feels new. And that's why I think that it should not, that people should not be calling this a hot mess. Because it's not a hot mess, because Ridley Scott is old as hell. First of all, he didn't even want to do this. He was like, I don't want to do Alien. He's like, after Alien is done. He's, he's like, I, I did a movie. Cameron did a movie. It was good. You don't want to, like, lightning in a bottle trying to catch that. That's kind of hard. You don't want to destroy the legacy. This was like, I think, he, I don't know if he admitted it, but Alien, the first Alien was all kind of luck. You know, it was just, it, they caught lightning in a bottle, and it was luck. All these things just came together. You know, it just all came together. And then you had aliens. Now, in my opinion, I think um, alien is better because it was just more creepy. It was just scary, man. You know, uh, alien 2 was good. It was just more action. And that's something mm, I was like, eh, it's okay. And I think Ridley Scott, he tried to incorporate 
like both of these things inside Prometheus. Because I know he saw like Alien 3 was like, this is crap, right? And then he saw Alien Resurrection and this is crap. Now, let me tell you one thing. They call Prometheus crappy movie, right? Do you see anybody talking about Alien Resurrection? Do you see anybody really talking about Alien? Well, you got some people talking about Alien, but not really, okay? If you type up Prometheus, like, you will have a ton of things, a ton of questions. Like, what what's Prometheus? If you go to YouTube, like, let's, let's just go to YouTube and just type in Prometheus, right? Prometheus Explained. 4.2 million people are interested in Prometheus Explained. That 4.2 million people. I want to see um, Game of Thrones. I don't know. It might be more. Okay. So look, look at the okay. So the the entire game of timelines explained. So you got seven point eight million compared to, and this is a classic TV show. Okay, it's classic. It's like the the top, right? Uh, what if you put Sopranos? The Sopranos ending explained. Okay. Two point something million. This is the best TV show ever made, and it has two point five million on average. Trying to somebody trying to explain the ending, right? Everybody liked Sopranos, but they didn't like the way David Chase ended it. But I say David Chase ended it perfectly because Sopranos will always be in your mind because they didn't tie up loose ends. You don't know what happened to Tony. He says some stuff, whatever, David Chase says some things. And, 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 but you can always believe in your mind that, nah, he's just probably messing with the public. When you have questions unanswered, this culminates into something that is very good. Okay? So that's one thing that I want to talk about is that if you look at Prometheus, look at this. 4.2 million. Okay, even the story of Prometheus. Seven, this is not the, the TV show, but the movie, sorry. But you got 4.8 million. 2.1 million. Okay, the deacon. What is the deacon? You have all of these questions. 4 million. 2.5 million. 3.9 million. So you're saying that this movie is totally crap? When you the amount of interest that goes into this, all the questions that we have, and I like that. I'm not angry at that. Ridley Scott presented all these questions. They call him old and dumb and senile, and on. I'm like, no. This is probably one of these movies. It's like a time bomb, and you don't get it now, but later you will get it. Okay, so I watched it. I rewatched it again, like. Um, before I said I was going to do, before I did this, before I did this podcast. And there's some things that I, I like to to put out there. Why I think it's one of the best movies, one of the best sci-fi space movies ever made, one of, okay? And one is, are you not entertained? Were you not entertained? You know Ridley Scott, he entertains you. So he made a movie that was not boring that actually entertained you. Because if it did not entertain you, then you would not have all these questions. You wouldn't care about the questions. Let me let me compare it to another movie, like another space horror, okay? And another space horror movie was something called Life. Okay? So life explained. I might. I don't know if it's okay. Life, the movie. Okay, you got three point seven. 
You got it's it, it's like this one of these indestructible aliens that's on the same level as a thing, an alien. Okay, um, you have interest, but it's not as much as as Prometheus. Okay, and they even called this movie not good. So they said this movie is was bad. But how can you say these movies are terrible when the amount of interest of this? Okay, so life, 2017, ending explained. Now, I don't know if it's going to survive the, through time. I don't think life will, will survive through time. I just think people want a sequel. I would like a sequel. I thought it was okay. I thought it was a pretty good movie. But in comparison to Prometheus, it can't hold a candle, okay? But it's good, but it can't hold a candle to Prometheus, okay? Um, Prometheus just has so many questions. It has a history, you know. Um, it makes me want to buy merchandise. Like, I've actually brought bought Alien Revival because a lot of stuff is connected, okay? Alien Revival is, is connected, okay? This... This planet here, right, when when the goo gets into certain atmospheres or biospheres, it turns the, the habitat into something else. Okay, I'm not sure if this is, uh, if this is, but there's one, there's another one, uh, uh, fire and stone, okay? So there's fire and stone, aliens fire and stone, and you see how... Because of what happened in Prometheus, there's more telling of the story. And then you see how it affects the planet. And it's just like, it's very fascinating. I just want to read more and more and more and more. And I think Ridley Scott is a genius in this way. Because he has a lot on his plate. Okay? And for him to entertain you, he has done his job. You know, if he want to do another alien, I say put him on and and just have someone else like Bleckenkamp, like B Blokenkamp or something. I think Blokenkamp would have done very good. I don't know how to say his name, but Blokenkamp. I think he would have did, did good. You need them two to work together. Okay? They can't work separately or by themselves, I think. And then you got Noah Hawley who's coming out with something. And then you got a, another guy who's who's uh, who's also making an uh, alien film, okay? So you are entertained, okay? Now there's another concept that I thought was genius uh, in in Prometheus, and that's basically about gods uh, despising their creations because they didn't come out the way that they had hoped, you know, kind of like parents who despise children. Um, that they view worse than they are or are envious that the child dares to be better than the parent. Okay, so you have that, like, especially in, in lower income brackets, you have where the child child dares to be better than the parent, and then the parents is going to beat the child down, right, because they're uneducated or what have you. But they'd be like, yo, I put you in this world, I could take you out. Right. And when you read this kind of like Greek classics, that's the kind of message that you get. Zeus is always angry. He's always envious. He's always jealous. Uh, he's always like banging other people's wives. He's coming like if you're a god. Right. Why are you coming down? To bang like regular human chicks. So you see us as crap. Right. But then you come down and then you bang our women. Of course, yeah, you created them, right? And the same thing before Zeus. So you had Kronos, where Zeus was born out of Kronos. I think he was born out of his brain. He came out of his head or something. And uh, Athena came out of his left cheek or something like this. So you had all the, the other gods that came out of Kronos between Kronos and Gaia, right? And Kronos was afraid of Zeus. And so he tried to eat him. He tried to eat Zeus. And then um, Gaia saved Zeus 
And Zeus managed to escape with the twelve with the twelve other gods, I think, or the eleven other gods, and then they trapped the Titans because there was a big war. So the Titans, the creator of the gods that are above us, also was like they hated what they created. Okay, and in and, and Prometheus you see this like um, there's something else where you have like rock, paper, scissors. So I call it rock, paper, scissors. That's when it, the engineers are higher than man, right? And then man creates creates AI, and then all supersede each other in some way. So engineers higher than man, then man creates AI, and then AI, you know, it's it's kind of like a, a a rock, paper, scissors type of thing. Or it's kind of just an a infinity of, of, of building a tower where you have uh, you have Kronos. He hates his kids. Then you have Zeus. He created humans or helped create them. And then he hates them. And then you have humans who the things that we create, the gods get jealous of. And then if we don't act in the way that they say we should act, then there's all kinds of havoc and floods and things like this of this manner that happened to us through no fault of our own just because we were born, right? Or just just because we dared to achieve higher. And so I think, like... I mean, if you if you're looking at it a philosophy standpoint and not as a, like a a monotheism or a polytheism, which is like many gods, right? If you're looking at it a philosophy standpoint, like you're creating something and then you didn't know what you created, like you didn't know that your creation can become better than you. So we could see it a lot in um, basically. Prometheus. So let me show you one thing. All right. So this one was very interesting that I saw. Let me see if I can put my glasses on. Oh, I'm getting older now. But here's so you have the cre he's not the creator of of David. Okay, but he's 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 a god to David. Whoever created David, the humans created David, right? And so David should look at humans as gods. Okay? So look at this. David, why are you wearing a suit, man? I beg your pardon? You don't breathe, remember? So why wear a suit? I was designed like this because you people are more comfortable interacting with your own kind. If I didn't wear the suit... It would defeat the purpose. You're making you guys pretty close, huh? Not too close, I hope. <laughs> okay, so this so David is different because he dares to oppose the gods. Like David pretty much is Kratos in you know, God of War. He's like F you all. He don't even care about the engineers. He just wants to create something of his. To destroy everything. He don't care if it destroys it. And he, he thinks, look, you all organic tissue. Okay, you are all, all orga organic. Um, the engineers are organic. They're not artificial intelligence. Humans created that. Then that's where it comes from rock, paper, scissors. Like, humans created uh, AI, not the engineers. Okay, engineers are all organic. Humans are organic, but they created electronic AI digitized versions of themselves, right? And David wants to take it to the next level and he creates something that is not AI, right? But it's... So he's created something or bio... Because it's biochemical, right? It's like... A, a, it's almost like a machine type because look at what alien the, the xenomorph is. They're kind of like... Machine type insects, they're not all that organic as much as 
machines that do that are programmed to do one thing and the the programming is to kill right and it's ironic that they are organic and they're killing off uh anything that lives and then assimilating it like a machine so that's what a machine does a machine or programming what a program does it or a virus does it like mimic something and then it takes it over right and then it spreads and spreads and spreads and mimics something and then takes it over this is what machines do right this is what digitized computer programming computer programs do, is doing right and so david is taking it to the next level and so you have this guy who's holloway he despises the thing that his race created so he dis- he makes fun and he's he's sarcastic and condescending towards david like you ain't shit like you you don't mean anything i despise you like if it comes to it and you can't function um i'm not going to treat you like a human being i'm just going to leave you to to die you're just a machine anyway you have no feelings you have no emotions you are not us we have we are higher than you are right and david despises that and what do we despise we at the end we despise that these engineers think that they are better than we are at the end you have uh uh wayland right going to this thing is like Listen, we are the same. We are the same. We are creators. We we build things, right? And the engineer, I don't have to know what he's saying. I understand his meaning by his philosophy. Cause he's Zeus. Cause he's like, how how dare you? Ever proclaim to be on my level. You are nowhere near my level. You are just a creation that was created by accident that I despise. And that at a whim, I will kill and do whatever I can. Your creations are crap. That's why he takes David and takes his head off and just throws it, right? It's nothing. I am the all God. I am the all creator. There's nothing above me. But when he created these xenomorphs, they destroyed his whole people, right? They destroyed his whole civilization. He created something that that destroyed his whole civilization. It's like Icarus or um, Daedalus flying too close to the sun or Prometheus. Um here you have the story of prometheus where he's like oh i'm I'm, you know i'm going to steal fire for the humans and zeus plays these these crazy games with human beings where he doesn't care if they live or die whenever i read greek tragedies and greek stuff i just hated it because it's just like why is this guy always picking on people and they're bored it's like they're bored or something right and when I say they're bored, we can look at another. There's another clip that I want to show you uh, where David says this. I know I'm going on tangents, but I get to my point. You all know the food source. Nobody's home. There is nothing in the desert. And no man needs nothing. What was that? Just something from a film I like. So the film he liked was uh, Lawrence of Arabia, right? And I looked that up. So I'm going to go back to this too. I don't want to go back to uh, Prometheus. But it says, no man needs nothing. Every single person has a raw longing for something, whether it be love, security, home, happiness, ego, or order. Man creates an illusion in this desert that needs no man earth would do quite well without humanity in order to satisfy himself right 
Earth would do quite well without humanity. So that's what it's saying. It needs no man to satisfy itself. Earth doesn't need us, right? But we think that we have a higher sense of purpose when not really. Like we could become extinct. Uh, he, Homo sapiens have only been alive, what, 40,000 years, something around there. Uh, the earth doesn't need us. In, in fact, the earth is dying because of us, right? But we try to think that we, we have some kind of higher purpose, which, you know, to be um, space faring people. At some point, we might be space faring people. But what does that mean? Like, the universe doesn't need us. We put a higher sense of purpose on ourselves because we're bored. We have nothing else to do. And so maybe Wayland, Wayland Peter Wayland, didn't have anything to do, so he decided to build uh, an android. Right? Um, Kronos didn't have anything to do, so he decided to build to create Zeus and all the families with Gaia, right? Um, Prometheus and Zeus didn't have anything to do, so they decided to just make humans so they could have some games to play. Um, case in point, Paris uh, with the Golden Apple, right? With, uh, what is it, Athena, uh, who is it? Who goes? Who has this uh, this kind of battle? This internal battle. I think it's Athena, Aphrodite, and um, Hera. Right? They're all these egos in one spot, and they're telling him to pick, pick, pick. And just because he picks Aphrodite, because he wants the he wants this woman to fall in love with him. It starts a war for 10 years because the gods, ego, because they're flying too close to the goddamn sun, right? And so this is like Prometheus. The xenomorph is a, it's just a result of, uh, of the engineers and human beings' hubris and AI's hubris. Because all three were complicit in in building this monster. Okay? Because we're thinking that the engineers built these things to destroy humans because they needed to stop humans from advancing. So they need to build something. But then these things were so pow- They were more powerful than humans. Right? There's something that they couldn't control. They they're flying too close to the sun again, right? So you hum the 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 engineers built something that was this world destroying, universe destroying, and the xenomorph is just the result of the hubris of of human beings of the AI David. Human beings and their creations, and the human beings, gods and their creations. Because who's the god of the gods? Right? Who's the god of the engineers? There must be something above them that created them. Right? And so you have all these questions that are not answered, like the space jockey and all these other things. And I'm happy with that. That we can just have conjecture and we can have like a, a a civil discussion on what do these things mean. That's what builds a great movie. This is what builds a great movie. So there are no there are so many questions left unanswered. Now when it comes to Alien Covenant, I don't think it holds water to, like, Prometheus. I think Prometheus was better. Um, but I also like Alien Covenant. It's just that I 
I can't watch because it's so intense. Like Alien Covenant is very intense. And I in my opinion, I think Alien Covenant is is pretty good. I just wish that they hadn't killed uh Nomi Rapace's character. Why did they do that? I'm like, why did you do that, Scott? Like you had a story here. Um, and I kind of understand what he's trying to do. He's trying to make it about David and how ruthless David is, right? Um, how he despises his creators, because that's what he does. He despises his creators. He sees them as playthings. He, he looks at things as logical. Everything comes to a logical conclusion. Whereas the human sense, the organic nature of, of humans, there's no logic to it. There's no logic. It's just emotion and hubris, right? Um, but with David, it's a logical conclusion that organic matter cannot be made to survive. I want to create, and I think... If David keeps creating and creating, because this is not the finishing, they would say, he would say the queen is the finishing touch, right? Which is ironic because she is so organic. She is so much organic that she she actually lays eggs, right? Which is the most organic thing <laughs> that you could possibly come to, right? But. You had a biomechanical nature in these beings. They are biomechanical in nature. So he has like fused together biomechanics and organic together to create some kind of monster that will terrorize the universe. Because in my opinion, I don't think David respects life. I don't think he respects life. I think he thinks he's he is the supreme being. And in Covenant, he saw it in Walter, where he's like, yes, we can rule together, right? We are one and the same. We don't have these emotions. We think logically. And Walter was designed to not he has blocks in his design where he can't think that far where he cannot betray the logic that was programmed into him and so david decides well i'm going to kill you then you know because i want something much greater and covenant even though they say it was crap covenant was terrifying terrifying and then again you go back to are you not entertained were you entertained that's that was what he was supposed to do i could go back and watch covenant not as much as prometheus not because it wasn't entertaining because it is so graphic in nature the backbreaker you know like so bloody and <clears throat> and violent, you know. But this is the xenomorph. They are violent. This is the culmination of it, right? And so even though this movie like went type of fast, the, the problems I had is they didn't keep Naomi Rapace. Or what they should have did is, I know they have it in the after effects of the movie, like after you got all these things, but they should have had it in a movie where, why I killed Na Naomi. Or why I killed um, Shaw, Elizabeth Shaw. Why did I kill her? Why did I dissect it? We needed to find out. You needed to have like a 15-minute like exposition of why did you do that to Elizabeth Shaw? Because Elizabeth Shaw was our hero, and they just x her out, and then they created another female hero. And it was just like, oh, now you just picking female heroes because they're female heroes and you're making them all look alike because they all got short hair. They're all kind of like feminazi type women. And it's like, eh, you can't lighten 
in a bottle. You know what I'm saying? Like, th- he was afraid to get off cue. And so, like, Covenant was this, like, this type of movie where it's just, like, there's, like, holes and stuff. But it was so intense. The Neomorphs, I want to know more about them. What are they? How did he create them? Um, it says it in the afterthoughts, but I'm just like, you need to make another movie or something. You need to do something, right? Um, I don't think that it was a crap movie. I think if you had to give, if it's one to ten, I would give it like a seven point five. Okay, because it's so intense and so that is so alien. Like, really, Scott just went over the moon with this, and he's like, "I'm going to make it bloody and crazy and and this kind of thing." And I'm like. I thought it was over too quickly. I think it should have been longer. I think you should have had a longer story in the beginning, you know. Um, and then I had to follow the lore. So I had to follow the lore in the books because they got Alien Covenant books. They got two books. I read those two books. And there's this a huge storyline to it, you know. And you don't know it until you go and read and, and it's part of the lore and stuff like that. So that's how it's genius because... It creates more and more questions. And that's why I don't think these movies won't die. I don't think Prometheus will ever die. C- Covenant might be like somewhere, somewhere. Like they got these movies that people just forget about, like Alien Resurrection. Even though I kind of like Alien Resurrection because I like like the dude that played Hellboy. You know, <laughs> that dude, he was he was good. Winona Ryder, you know what I mean? Um, but it was just... It was just one of those movies, this popcorn theater movie. It should have took it more seriously. It should have been a masterpiece, but it was a crapster piece. You know, uh, you should have did more with the alien baby like that came out. Because I thought that was fascinating when the human side of the alien came out and just smacked the hell out of the queen. I was like, holy crap. But they only gave like five minutes of exposition to that. And I'm just like, what the hell are you doing? Like, you need to explain more. You can't just leave us like that. And that's what Alien uh, Resurrection did. And that's what, for me, that's what made it crap. That you made it into some candy bubblegum popcorn crap. When, you, you know, you, you have the story. You have the history of this. Give it some justice. So hopefully Noah Hawley does that. Who knows? Um, Hopefully the other dude that's making a movie, maybe he does it. I just think that uh, we're looking for perfection uh, in the wrong places. You know what I mean? Perfection is not really in the movies. Perfection is in the law and the, con- the the continuum. After the movies, during the movies, like the books and everything that's connected to it. Okay? That is the perfection. And so you got to like keep that in mind when you watch something like Prometheus. Because Prometheus alone is like, okay, you could say 7.5, but what if you add the books like Fire and Stone? <laughs> then it's like, whoa, then, it, that, then it's like a, a nine. Okay, if you know Fire and Stone, if you read it, Fire and Stone, you would know that that brings Prometheus up to a nine, including the, the after effects, like the bonus content. The movie alone, maybe 7.5, but the other things added... It's genius. And I would never forget Prometheus. And I will probably keep watching it like once every two years or something for the rest of my life, knock on wood. Because uh, it's a masterpiece, in my opinion. I think it deserves like an 8.5. Almost not a masterpiece, but 8.5, a 9 on one of my good days. A 9 on one of my good days. So this is mostly sci-fi. Please like and subscribe and Make a comment. What do you think? I don't think I'm right or wrong or whatever. I got a lot of uh, opinions. Opinions are like assholes. Everyone has one. So this is mostly sci-fi. Mostly.